Season 3, episode 11 of The Adventure Begins, man. Watch it. Don't watch it. I don't care. But it's happening regardless. This week, make sure you get in your 2D art prints and your minis by 10 p.m. this Friday, man, for the monthly competition. The entry fee is 10 bucks. Voting starts on Saturday. Tuesday, March 15th, we've got the live Comic Lotto and Spawn Auction. That's right, man, it's Todd McFarlane's birthday on Wednesday, so we're gonna auction off some stuff on Tuesday. Like this. That's right, man, it's the Venom versus Spider-Man True Believers Number one, it's a graded 9.2, and it's signed by Todd McFarlane himself. So that's gonna be in the auction. We have a Batman year two action figure that's gonna be up for auction, as well as a whole bunch of other Spawn comics. So that starts 5.30 on Twitch, Facebook, whatever I decide to do at the last minute. Wednesday, March 16th, we got Ladies Game Night. This is a free event, 6 p.m. It's when, you know, all the ladies get together and Play some games. Austin's not here to give you all the details, but I imagine that's pretty much what, what it is for the most part. Thursday, March 17th, we have the art meetup. This is a free event, starts at 6 p.m. Um, that's all the details that I have because the person that's heading it up, well, they're not here. I let you know what's going on, and they don't let me what's going on, so whatever. Friday, March 18th, Magic the Gathering, a jumpstart sealed tournament. This is $20 a slot, 6 p.m. Here's Hayden with all the details. Hey guys, my name's Hayden. I work the Magic the Gathering here. I set up the events and run the events as well. And this upcoming Friday, we do have a sealed draft, sorry, sealed event for our Jumpstart collection. Um, it's $20 entry. We do do store credit for the price support. So come on out, have some fun, open up some weird cards. Saturday, March 19th, we got Pokemon Chilling Rain Build and Battle Tournament. It's $30 a slot, 12 p.m. start time as well as the Adventure Stadium Daddy and Me Trade Night. This is a free event. Starts at 4 p.m. Guess what? Here's your new favorite person, Brandon. Hey, we got a Daddy and Me Trade Night coming March 19th, 4 to 8 p.m. Bring your baseball, basketball, football, whatever you got. Be looking forward to seeing y'all. Have a good time. Will there be pizza? No. Uh, I'm out. Sunday, March 20th, man, we got the D&D Junior Adventures League. Man, you got to sign up online, $5. Uh, you pay that 5 bucks whenever you get here. It starts at 4 p.m. Upcoming events, Saturday, March 25th, we got the 2021 Panini Mosaic Football Break, as well as Saturday, March 26th, the Warhammer 40K Narrative Tournament. These are limited spots, and uh, we'll have more details about that next week. Our spring break camps are in session this week, so check them out right here. On Tuesday, we're doing superhero comics. Read a new superhero comic, make your own superhero with your own small, tiny comic book, and we're gonna have the kids trade them at their own mini con with badges and everything. So Wednesday, we'll be doing character creation, stats, and backstory for D&D. Thursday is Ultimate Detective. Play secret identity games, scavenger hunts, as well as creating your own disguise. And for the last day of our camp, Friday is Star Wars Force Training Camp with activities like make your own lightsaber, learn your Star Wars name, and a trivia contest. Plus, this is where the big pizza party is going to happen, so you don't want to miss Friday, that's for sure. If you're interested, stop on by or message the shop with any questions that you may have. Please note that signups have to be in person here at the shop and camps are from 11.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. We can't wait to see you all during these awesome spring break Damn it, almost had it. <laughs> we can't wait to see all of you during these awesome spring break camps. And remember, your adventure begins right here.
Check it out, man. This is Jason making terrain. I'm Jason, and I'm making terrain. <laughs> and that was Jason making terrain. All right, man, it's time to fill your stash this week. Here are the top 10 books that I recommend that you pick up that are coming out this week. Well, this is my personal opinion, but, uh, you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. And don't forget to check out The Adventure Begins Facebook every week for the FOCs as well. Uh, number 10, I've got The Eternals, The Heretic, number one. Uh, this is Uranus's origin story as he meets up with Thanos, and there's a big surprise at the end. Uranus gives something to Thanos that... I don't know. It should be a big, awesome thing. Number nine, Fantastic Four, The Reckoning War, it's The Trial of the Watcher. Number one, we get, to, we get to look back at the past with some change-ups. Could be some variations on characters, like a what-if type situation, or some characters we haven't seen in a while. So it could be a fun book. Number eight, we got Slumber. Number one, it's a nightmare hunter who is tracking a serial killer that murders people in their sleep. I kind of dig it because I'm a big fan of Freddy Krueger. Could it be Freddy Krueger? Could be. I doubt it. That'd be awesome if it was. Number seven, Star Wars Halcyon Legacy, number two. Um, there's a mysterious character who could bring down the ship that's been floating around for 275 years. I don't know who it is. Maybe you know who it is because you've been reading it. Number six, Batman the Knight, number three. This is going to be the Foundling's first full appearance. Should be an awesome key. Number five, Carnage, number one. It's an introduction of a few new characters, one being an obsessed new villain called the Artist. Number four, Avengers 54. We've got uh, new Avengers, new members. One of the old school Avengers has been wildly transformed. Number three, World's Finest, number one. It's another Batman Superman teen up, but the reason why I recommend this is because we have a Jerry Seinfeld cover. So it's kind of like comedians in cars getting coffee, but with Batman and Superman. Should be fun. Number two, Shadow Man. Number seven, it's got the Shining movie variant. These movie variants go really, really quick and uh, they kind of hold their value. And at number one, we have Spawn Scorched. Number three, the 1990s X Men comic series homage. So this is not going to stick around long. We've got an honorable mention, Red Wraith, number one. It's the story of a young skateboarder who falls victim to a prank gone wrong and dies at the bottom of a half pipe. What the killers don't know is that the half pipe is built on cursed land, and now the curse is coming for them. It's time to skate or die, nerds. Going up on the wall this week, we've got Star Wars number 21. This is the Mayhew Darth Vader variant. And I've got the Virgin variant as well. Right there, man. Both a part of a limited run, and they both come with a COA. So it's Darth Vader. I don't even think I have to put him on the wall, and he'll already be gone. All right, man, now that you know about the stash, it ain't so secret. All right, man, it's time for MCP. And, uh, you know, we've got green is the theme of the month, man. And, my mood throughout this entire show. This is perfect because he's got the Hulk. I got the Hulk. Are you ready for the Hulk? Yeah. Nobody's ever really ready for the Hulk, are they? <laughs> so we got the Hulk. No. Yeah. Bruce Banner. Mm -hmm. Robert Bruce Banner. Did you know his first <laughs> name was Robert? He is a six threat, which is one of the bigger, bigger dudes. He's got 20 health on his front side, and he has no backside because if you take him out, take all his health away, he's gone. But he's got 20 of it. So his defenses are. Four physical, three energy, three mystical. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to She-Hulk, she's better with the energy defense. He's better with the physical defense. Mm -hmm. Then he's got three attacks. His main builder mm -hmm. is called, boringly so, Strike. Although you wouldn't want to get hit by a strike, I imagine. Oh, that's kind of boring. Yeah, it is. It's a range two. Strength seven, though. So you're rolling seven dice on the attack of... Zero power, you gain power equal to the damage you deal. And uh, if you roll a swirly in there, a wild, you can push the target short. A little bit slap. A little <laughs> pimp slap from the, <laughs> the second uh, attack is a thunderclap, which is an energy attack. Interestingly so, right? Who do you think energy attack from the Hulk? But what's cool about it, it's a beam three. So it's range three beam template. Oh, that's cool. So you can hit multiple people in the same shot. Um, 
Strength five, three power for this one. That costs you some energy to fire that one off. Then we have his big one, which is the Hulk smash. All right, all right. So range two, strength eight dice now you're throwing. Uh, four power to throw it on the wild, the target is staggered, and you can push them short. Oh, wow. So that's up. <clears throat> then he's got superpowers. Here we go. With the superpowers, we got Gamma Leap, which for, I think it's what, three? Yeah, three power, he can place within two. So this is in addition to any normal movement he has. No. And he's on that big old base, so he's got his move. He can do a Gamma Leap, which gets him an extra two. Mm -hmm. You could get that Hulk around, moving around. How does he move like us? He moves uh, short. Oh, okay, right on. He moves short, but he's got that big base. So a short like a for him is like a medium for yeah. somebody on a medium base. Yeah. Uh, then we have the strongest one there is. Of course, it's power two. But if you're going to be the Hulk, you got to be able to throw some stuff. So he can throw size four terrain or people within range two of him medium. Oh, he can do it once per turn. Ouch. He's one of the few characters who can throw a size four piece of terrain. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. She-Hulk, I think, is one of the few others. Uh, then we have a reactive superpower, which is Hulk, not puny banner. <laughs> For four power, when defending from a physical or energy attack, he can re-roll any number of the defense dice, including skulls. Oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah, so... I'm not usually able to do that. No, and he's one of these characters, you kind of want him to take some heat, because we'll show why in, in one of his other superpowers. So you want him to be beat up a little bit, but not too much, right? Okay. So he's passed another passive superpower called Inner Rage. During the power phase, he gains two additional power, so he's going to be generating three power a turn for you. Wow, that's almost some Thanos jazz. Mm-hmm, yes. And then his last passive superpower, you will like me when I'm angry. Chaz totally feels today. That's right. <laughs> You add one die to the attack rolls for every four damage he has taken. Mm -hmm. So that's why you want him, you know, oh, shave wow. a little off the top. And now all of a sudden your Hulk smash is a nine dice if you're taking four. Or ten dice if you're taking eight. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. And then if he flips, he's knocked out. No injured type for the Hulk. He's immune to poison and stun. Oh, right on. That is the Hulk in MCP. The Hulk in comic book land. Robert Bruce Banner, he was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. He first appeared in The Incredible Hulk number one, May 1962. Groundbreaking character. Uh, mm -hmm. Stan Lee said his, the inspiration for him was Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, yeah, right on. Didn't, Obvious. Didn't take too much of a matchup to <laughs> not rocket science there. In live action, my favorite, 1978 mm -hmm. TV show, The Incredible Hulk, mm -hmm. Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno. Ah, who's Hulk. Lou Ferrigno? Lou Ferrigno. And then we just cut into a Lou Ferrigno right here. That's right. <laughs> so it's the same stuff. Squeeze that in. <laughs> get out of it. And in 2003, we had a Hulk movie just called Hulk with Eric Banner. We won't talk about that one, though, right? Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. We'll one. just keep moving on. The next time the Hulk was portrayed was by Ed Norton, 2008, The Incredible Hulk. Which I didn't think was too bad yeah, in the movie. Decent, but I still see Ed Norton. It wasn't Hulk. like the new era MCU though, right? Mm -hmm. That was still waiting for Iron Man there. But they do consider it part of uh, canon. Yes, yes, movie. they're still taking some of that. But they don't talk about it. No, but no. it's part of it. So Hulk got recast as Mark Ruffalo, as we all know and love, right? And that was his first appearance was in Avengers movie, 2012. And um, he will be. He's appeared in all almost all the MCU stuff since then. Okay. Most recently, the What If he voiced did the voice of Hulk. Yeah, that's right. He and is. then he'll be in the She Hulk uh, series when that comes out too here soon. Mm -hmm. So that is the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. Mean Green and ready to play something. I don't know. <laughs> Lost my rhyme there. <laughs> it's a Lean Green fight machine. Fight machine. There you are. There you are. Oh, man. Who do you, are you covering? Not, Anybody interesting? Not as bulky as the Hulk, you know, but uh, Green Goblin. He's a 7 health, 4, 3, 3 across the board, medium range character. He's got the brain power. He does have the brain power. And I haven't uh, played with this character, nor have I uh, fought against this uh, character mm -hmm, either. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but after reading this, it seems pretty fun. He is pretty cool. It's part of the spider foes. It's for his action. we got pumpkin bombs. Yes. He's a range 4, 5 dice attack. The character gains power equal to the damage dealt, but before choosing a target, the Green Goblin can choose whether it's an energy or a physical oh, attack. Oh, so he can pick on your weakness. Nice. Yeah, which is pretty dope. 
Um, a swirly deals out bleed, poison, or incinerate special condition. So you can pick. Well, you can pick one of the three. That's nice. You've got your so if he's going up against Hulk, he's immune to what? Poison? Yeah, poison That's and stun. Put bleed, bleed on. Bleeds on you. Sure, sure. Knight of the Goblin is a range three, seven dice, four power Ooh. spender. Again, Goblin gets to decide if it's really the, uh, energy, energy or... or and um, after the attack is resolved, the target gains poison and incinerate this period. So an incinerate is always good to throw on people, right? One less die, some defense. Yeah, Ouch. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oscorp Weaponry. Uh, this is leadership ability for spider foes. Yes. Uh, once per turn, while the character is attacking during the modified dice stage, uh, you may re-roll an opposing uh, di uh, defense, uh, dice. defense dice. Most interestingly enough, this was changed back in the November update, which this character and Hulk didn't get a lot of table play before then mm -hmm. because they were kind of wimpy. But this change to this leadership role mm -hmm. has really buffed up this character and gotten this character a lot of table time now. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, anytime you can re-roll and mess up with the, uh, the other player's dice. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. Really nice. Uh, hit and run, two power action spender. Uh, just like Star Lord, this character makes an attack and he gets to move. Now I play Star Lord all the time. I love this move. What Star Lord? It's a great move. Uh huh. Especially if you're in a sticky situation and you want to do a little damage and get out and of there. Drop back. And get out of there. Yeah, or move forward if well, you're trying to get something. Yeah, yeah you can mm -hmm. totally move mm -hmm. forward. Usually I do it defensively. Well, <laughs> that's just me. Um, trigger treat is a three dice reactive spender. When an enemy character ends in advance or is placed within four. Choose an interactive terrain feature, size three or less. Within two, uh, destroy the terrain feature. The enemy character suffers a collision as if uh, the terrain feature were thrown at So them. he can blow things Just, up. He's, he's blown it up. Very similar to Mystique and That's the right. Punisher, who also like to blow terrain up that That's people right. like to stand next to. Yes, exactly. Very cool. So this is cool. Um, Arch Nemesis, uh, which I kind of dig. Peter Parker. In parentheses, mm -hmm. uh, when attacking Peter Parker, this character may modify or re-roll skull dice and may re-roll any number of attack dice uh, at the start of this character's activation. If there's a non-dazed Peter Parker around, mm -hmm. uh, within three, um, Goblin first okay. action. Goes after him. Yeah, goes directly after old, old Petey boy. Um, got a grudge. Yeah, because <laughs> constant is flight as well, so obviously with the... His glider. Yep. Uh, once he flips over, uh, a lot of things happen to, to old guy. Several changes. Yeah. yeah. His health drops from seven to five. Mm -hmm. uh, his physical drops from four to three, but his mystic raises from three to five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, hit and run is replaced by glider ram. It's a three power spender where the character is thrown medium and doesn't suffer any damage whatsoever. Kind of like uh, Gamora's Assassin's League. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, Let's see what that is. Look at you referring all the way back to the Keep On Guardian. <laughs> I like the Guardians. That's right. Uh, the reactive trick or treat is replaced with the constant unstable psyche. Yes. Uh, this power cannot hold, uh, this power, this player cannot hold objectives. That's the most interesting, yeah, biggest change. Yeah. yeah. It can't interact with uh, objective tokens either. And during the power phase, roll five dice for every crit, swirly, and hit this character gains power. Yeah. So he becomes like a. More of a just pure killing machine. Yeah, just he just wants to kill. Power yeah. builder all day long, mm -hmm, man. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty dope, man. Uh, that's, that's pretty much him on his card. So he seems like he can do some damage. Yeah. And leading spider foes mm -hmm. really helps with that Oscorp leadership. Heck yeah, man. The Green Goblin made his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man number 14 back in July of 1964. Nice. Uh, Oz, uh, Harry Osborn, uh, Bart Hamilton... And Norman Osborn have all donned the moniker of oh, the Green Goblin. Okay. But of course, Norman was the most famous. Yes. Uh, his bat shaped glider appears in Amazing Spider Man number 17. For all you collector, key collectors out there. And um, over his shoulder, you'll see him usually with a bag full of goodies. His bag of tricks <laughs> consisting of pumpkin and ghost bombs. Yeah, sure. not nice. Everybody loves it. So. Especially if your name's Peter Parker. <laughs> That's right, man. So that's the Green Goblin. And every time I do something like this, now I want to play with this character. I know, right? <laughs> but I'm going to give Jason a break. I've got like uh, three more things to buy. Yeah. And then I'm going to take We a have an inventory break. stock. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Well, that's MCP, man. Check it out, dude. We play every Friday, and it starts around like 5.30. Yeah. So it was fun. And then we have that Extra Life tournament on April 16th, which will be fun. I MCP. This an all-day thing. And you get 25% off your MTVs. MTV. MCP MTV. stuff. 
on that day. Yeah, I go, man. Also, look for some exciting demo events that we will be having soon. Mm -hmm. Tune in for that for more news. It will be coming soon. That's right, man. So come hang out with us and get your Marvel Crisis Protocol on, son. Hey guys, I'm Hayden. I do a lot of the TCG stuff around here. My main focus is Magic the Gathering card games. Um, but outside of that, I do play some Warhammer. I do nerd out on a lot of things in store. Um, just comics aren't my forte, to be honest. As far as outside of the store goes, I play a lot of uh, video games, uh, computer mo uh, mostly. Uh, I read manga every now and then. Anime is a real big thing for me as well. Um, most of the time, it's just spending time with my friends and family and stuff like that. The coolest thing I've ever done, I met, I met one of the pro players from Magic the Gathering. His name is Reed Duke. He's a big, uh, I'm a big fan of his. He plays a lot of mid-range decks in Magic, and that's really my go-to. So meeting him was a very big, big thing for me. And I'm Hayden, and come see me at, in the Great Hall at the Adventure Begins for any card game you can imagine. <laughs> Before we go, man, here's this week's pet of the week. It's Hunter. It's Kitty Cat. Hunting things around the living room. Hey, man, check it out, dude. I've got a Carnage poster that I want to give to you cats. Um, so I'm going to ask a question. You just write down the answer in the comments. We'll put you in a randomizer. And uh, whoever wins the poster, we'll have it here for you in store. So here's a question. What is the name of the Spider-Man video game for Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis? That was star that starred Carnage as the main villain. So uh, again, write down your stuff. Let's give away this poster. It's a pretty dope poster. You want your comics, games, and sports cars, but you're too afraid to go outside? Well, then stop by our online store at shop.theadventurebeginstx.com for all of your nerdy needs. Free shipping to all 50 states with orders over $100. We got a new episode of Zoinks. Comes from our friends across the pond. Z-Box, man, check it out. And, you know, like all the other Zoinks, if you want an item from that box, hey, I want this item, put you in a randomizer. And if your name pops up, well, you get that item. Depending on what it is, I haven't opened it yet. Could be something that I want. I might want the whole box. New episodes drop every week on certain social media platforms like Facebook and on YouTube, as well as on Roku. For me and for you, through thewoodlandsonline.com. Hope you join us next week for more games and comics. And people not showing up, that'd be awesome. It's International Shoe Day. So if you're watching this episode, please share it. Tell your friends about it. It's just like the guy who invented Velcro to himself. Why not? See you, nerds. No, that oh, yeah, one, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, this is my best impersonation of the chess. Yeah. Hey! I don't know what she's like. <laughs> no, no. Do I really want to do this? God, help me. Hey, March 19th at 4 p.m. Daddy and me? <laughs> uh-huh. What? Dude, what? 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 I don't, what am I supposed to do? We're gonna have a daddy and trade, a daddy and me trade night, March nineteenth, four p.m. to eight p.m. It's free. It's free. God, get me out of here. <laughs> like, I don't want to be chasing no more. It's not fun as I thought it would be.